From material science, we move to computer science. So hello, everyone. I'm Nimisha, and I'm a lecturer in the College of Computing. Hi, and I'm Rodrigo Borella. I'm also a lecturer in the School of Computing Instruction. And I think that this is a really good uh, image to get us started. So a lot of the software that we use nowadays runs on these really big data centers. And that has a huge impact on our energy grid and our energy demand. So about 5% of the world's electricity is going into feeding these data centers and sustaining our lifestyle. Even your coffee maker probably runs some form of software to make sure that your coffee is made at a certain time and, and it, it's warm and so on. So it's really important for us to teach our students to think about the efficiency of their code. So you see here two functions that do exactly the same job, but one of them is much more efficient than the other. So we've been teaching our students about efficiency in code for a long time, but these metrics are too abstract for them. They sometimes struggle to really understand what's the impact of writing efficient code. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to integrate uh, energy efficiency as a measure for them to really understand what's the impact here. So we're teaching them how to evaluate, design, and problem solve. And because all students at Georgia Tech have to take at least one computing class, we're reaching about 8,400 students every year. Um, and the idea here is for us to include this in every class in our curriculum. So to help us measure this energy efficiency, we use a tool called the Code Carbon API. And it tracks where you are in the planet. It looks at the energy uh, distribution in that location. And then by measuring how much energy was consumed by a piece of code you wrote, it helps you understand how much carbon is emitted into the atmosphere. But only measuring is not enough. So we also need to teach our students how to use these metrics and then write more ener energy efficient code. So we teach them how to use better data structures, how to use better practices when they're implementing their software to make it more energy efficient overall. Um, we teach them strategies like how to refactor it to make it uh, run faster. And we want them to apply this directly to problem solving. So here you see a leaderboard for uh, a competition that we're having right now. So our students are competing for the most efficient version of their code uh, and the one that made the biggest step towards sustainability. And they're also applying that to identifying what are the most carbon consuming uh, routes in a Delta's airlines uh, track, essentially. So the way that we're assessing this to see if the, this intervention is really working is both measuring directly how much the energy efficiency has improved in their code, but also using this pre and post survey to look at their attitudes towards sustainability and computing based on the knowledge that they gain from this class. But building sustainable software goes beyond just efficient code. It includes other system infrastructure considerations like requirements, deployment and scalability, and people concerns like user experience and accessibility. Um, so the next course that we are targeting for sustainability is software engineering course. And this is kind of the course structure for software engineering where we focus both on the requirements engineering aspect as well as the implementation aspect. And students work on two projects and they create two end-to-end -end working software solutions as part of this course. I was quick. <laughs> And so the course redesign is focusing on some key learning outcomes. We want to make sure that students grasp the fundamentals of sustainable software engineering. They know what are the social and environmental implications of creating software, as well as they know how to implement these principles in order to create a, and deploy software that is scalable and according to um, sustainability concerns. So we are starting off with the foundation where we are giving lectures on the fundamentals. We are giving assignments that ask students to look at their code efficiency and see uh, the reduction in carbon footprint. Project one is focused on requirements engineering from sustainability lens, and project two is focused on uh, sustainable implementation. So in the foundation phase, we first ask students to complete this uh, module, which is by Microsoft. And then we talk about what are the industry standards in software engineering. We talk about climate commitments, moving to renewable uh, energy sources, sustainable supply chains, and employee well-being programs that these tech giants are adopting in today's day and age. 
And then we ask them, given an inefficient piece of code, how can they make it efficient? But then what does it translate to in terms of reducing the carbon footprint? And then if the software or the code is scaled up to match a real software, how does that impact change? So that is the assignment aspect or the second level of our intervention. Finally, they are given one particular project in project one, which is a sustainable commute app. They create this app and they focus on the social and environmental implications, considering variables like fuel efficiency or the distribution of charging stations, et cetera. And in project two, they focus on deployment and scalability of the app and how that affects sustainability. So we already did this intervention in fall 2023, and the results already show a good shift in students' awareness of why sustainability is important in software development. These are a few comments that I liked that are on the screen. Uh, but the whole point here is um, using an IRB-controlled protocol method. So we have used that. And this course is only offered in once a year. So we need control data to do a comprehensive analysis. However, initial insights do show that students appreciate uh, and understand, they are more aware, and that our attitudes are changing about sustainability in software development. Um, that's all, thank you.